Hey everybody, it's your girl Tennessee North. Yep, I'm here with a video. Um, this video, you won't see a really like an ending to it because I'm going to carry over to the next video. And the next video leading up to Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, um... I want to show you something. Now, Tennessee North don't eat chitlins. Mm -mm. I cook them, but I don't eat them. Um, and I showed the crock pot, <clears throat> excuse me, the crock pot where I cooked the chitlins. It wasn't a very big pot. But I want to show you what $60, two five pound, I guess it was, bags of chitlins. This is Aunt Betty's chitlins. $29 and something. All total with tax for two bags now. $63. I'm going to show you what you can get. What you're going to get. Now this bowl is not full. It's not very big. And it's not full. $63. Somebody let this make sense to me. $63 for a small Tupperware. When I was a kid, a 10 pound bucket was like three or four dollars, five at the most. And I used to see my mom picking them and cleaning them and cooking them. A couple of buckets, you had a lot. Now it's more water. They freeze the water. They put a handful of chitlins in there, I guess, and they freeze the water. So by the time you clean all the, the mess off of it and unthaw the water, then cook them, that 10 pound becomes two, three pounds. Nothing. Now, a five pound bag, once the water goes down, it's it's probably a quart size. And by the time you cook them, put the two bags together, you just barely got a quart. Don't make no sense, do it. Mm -mm. Good thing Mr. is the only one that's eating them here. Yeah. So, um, what I'm cooking is two hams, two turkeys. I'm going to cook the small ham. I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare this small ham. Now, you may do yours different. I'm just going to show you how Tennessee North does hers. I got a small ham. And I got a large turkey back there. And this is probably um, about an 18-pound turkey behind me. And I got a 14-pound, 14 14-and-a-half-pound 14 one in the freezer, refrigerator. They have to be unthawed all the way so you can clean them. And um, I think I'm going to, well, I'm going to fry one and I guess I'm going to smoke the other one. Yeah. 
So I'm doing everything way in advance. Hopefully on this video, you're going to see me um, break down this dress and get the stuff all in it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw mine, after I get it made up, I'm going to put it in the freezer. Yeah. And then all I have to do is put it in a pan and run it in the oven. I'm trying to get as much done as I can so I can sit in and enjoy Thanksgiving. Usually, I'm just going and going and going. Yeah. The turnip greens are already done. I'm going to set them out probably um, maybe uh, Wednesday. Put them in the refrigerator, bottom of the refrigerator. Or Tuesday night and put them in the bottom of the refrigerator. And Wednesday, I probably throw them in a crock pot Wednesday night. That way they'll be unthawed. Put them on low and they'll be unthawed because they're already seasoned. I cook mine all the way, season it. So when I unthaw them, they're ready to eat. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to show you this ham here. And this is the small one. It's a shadow right there. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this skin off, top skin off. And my knife. And I'm just going to go along the sides of the skin. Just go along here and take this skin off the top. Yeah. You may cook yours with it on. I don't. You'll see. Okay. So it's kind of like doing surgery, really. You just kind of go around it. Take this top off here. Because this is really thick. Now some people keep this skin. If it was a smoke one, I would. Because then there'll be some flavor in it. Yeah. Now I've already washed this ham. Are you just really trimming off all this thick skin off of it? Okay. Now you see the apron in the background. Yeah. So what I usually do with mine, you don't have to do yours like this. This is the way Tennessee North does hers. So this is a, a picnic ham. And what I normally do with mine is, I don't put the glaze on. Before. 
I put in Evan. Mm -mm. This is the way I've always done mine. I don't put the glaze on first. I put my glaze on at the end. I don't want it to burn on it, so I don't put mine on it. And now I got these clothes. I put the clothes in. If you know what clothes are, they're just little, little sticks. And I put them in there. So what this does, it'll give it a flavor. So I'm just going to put a few in here. And you just kind of poke them in. Now I put them on this side where I took the... Um, where I took the skin off. And normally I'll put some um, some pineapples, maybe some cherries. So I have to see if I got some pineapples over here but I don't put the um, glaze on it until afterwards and these clothes it's just gonna make the meat have a little flavor to it Now this is optional. You don't have to put no clothes in yours. Mm -mm. Everybody don't like that flavor. It doesn't give it a strong flavor or anything like that. It just gives it a flavor. Hold on. Okay. Just going to put a few more of these clothes in here. Not not too many more, but just a few. Like I said, I mostly just stick with the top part where I've taken the skin off. Like that. And I got some pineapples. I'm going to do the same to the big ham as, as I did to the um, small one. Now, I would put some cherries on here, but I just got rid of my cherries the other day. I felt like I had them too long. So I got rid of them. And that's really for decoration. And that's really all the pineapples are, decorations. really for the decoration. Now, some people put brown sugar and all that. I don't put mine on there at the beginning. 
But I do make a glaze that goes on here at the end. And once I this is done, I would say probably about an hour and a half to two. I'm going to, um, when it comes out, I'm going to cover this with foil, aluminum foil. I'm not going to put any liquid in the bottom of the pan. Mm -mm. And when it comes out, I'm going to make a glaze. And I'll let you see the glaze that I make. And pour it on it. And then I'll put it back in the oven for about maybe 20 minutes or so. So the glaze can adhere and the, the flavor of the glaze will go down in the ham. Yeah. That's how Tennessee North does hers. No liquid. Just going to put it in a pan. And I'm using four pans. And do the same to the big one. The reason why I didn't buy one great big ham was I had two small ones. And I thought, well, I'm either going to do one big one or, or the two small ones. So it's either going to be I have another one the same size or I'm going to do the big one. I'll let you know. No liquid. I'm gonna put some foil in the. I'm gonna put some foil over this, and I'm gonna put it in the um, oven. Now this right here is gonna make liquid of its own. And um, the reason why I was, I'm not sure about the size of the ham. Either I'm gonna do the other one this one because, you know, this new thing everybody don't eat pork. So, yeah. But we have quite a few that do eat it. So that's why I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to do two small ones or a small and a big. We'll see. Yeah. So let me pop this in the oven. Hold on. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is inject the turkey. Now I thought it was an 18 pound turkey. It's a 19 pound 19.80. Can you see? Yeah. Well, it's backwards to you, but the weight is 19.80. It's a big one. So I'm going to inject it. And I want this one to have a smoke flavor. The other one... I'm going to inject it too. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to inject into it. We'll see. Trying something different. So, in this cup right here, I got butter. So, I got some hickory smoke marinade and because it has little pieces of um, herbs and stuff in it I'm going to pour it through a strainer I'm pouring that in the butter because it'd be hard to inject going through the needle and I'm going to put some liquid smoke in it. And this is Mystique. And a little bit more. Then, I'm going to season it all the way around, put some seasoning stuff on top, 
But this is my marinade that I'm going to uh, put in here. Next, I'm going to pour some pineapple juice in it. And I'm pouring over top of the herbs. So I'm going to make this a sweet, smoky flavor. I'm going to inject it, then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it set for, let's see, today, today is Sunday, so I'm going to leave it in there till maybe Tuesday, or yeah, tomorrow's Monday, so I'll probably let it marinate for a couple of days. Today's Sunday. Probably take it out Monday. I mean Tuesday. And put it in the smoker. So it'll be ready Wednesday. I usually put mine in there and leave it 24 hours. Or at least 12 hours. Depending on how big it is. And I can tell when it's done. So here's my injecting needle. Like so. And here's the turkey. I told you it was a big one. Okay, and what I usually start with is the breast. Normally you put butter up under it, but I'm going to inject it down into it. So I go in at the top, and I go in a little bit at a time. Since the breast is like the, has the most meat in it, and that's the one that will be the driest that's where you want to put most of your injection in get some more Pull it back a little bit. Hold on. Okay, maybe you can see a little better. Yep, and you just go around. You want to make sure you get those legs good, too. I even hit the wings with a little bit. The meaty part of the wing. Spin it around. I didn't want 
the butter to separate, so I'm going to give it a stir. Now I'm going to hit the legs. And you'll see it plump up. Try to get underneath there as well, because there's some meat under the back of the turkey as well. Ooh, he's squirting out on me. Okay. Let me get this other leg over here. You want your flavor to be all through this turkey. Try to get underneath there. Now I inject mine everywhere. Up in the very top. Hit it with something up there too. I inject the inside too. All the way through. That's what you want to do. You want to inject it everywhere. Because that flavor is going to be all through. So when you get ready to um, cut this turkey, you should be able to taste this seasoning all the way through. Plus on top of that, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to rub it down with something. So, yeah, I'm going to get the inside of it as well. I don't mean to make this video long on you, but I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing to this. And once it's set, all this is going to be in, in, I even hit the tail. Okay. And that's the turkey. Now I'm going to put some seasoning on top. Hold on. Okay, in this bowl, I'm going to put some black pepper. Some 
some garlic powder. So I'm going to make kind of like a paste and rub on it. Some of this, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Hold on. Okay. That powder made me cough. I had to go wash my hands. This is called some lemon stepping, stepper. And this is by um, Anthony Anderson and Cedric the Entertainer. Very good. It has a very good aroma to it. And I'm going to put some barbecue rub on it. This right here is Sweet Muskeek. Put some of this in there. Okay. And I'm going to put some rosemary. And I'm going to add some salt to it. Kind of stir all this in together. And not to forget the purple top. How do YouTube subscribers tell me about um, another season they told me I should check out? Um... I can't remember the name right off, but I had to wrote down. I'm going to try it. Okay. Now I'm going to take the marinara seasoning that I injected with. And I'm going to pour that in there. And I'm going to make a paste. And this right here is going to go all on top of the turkey. Like so. Okay. So now I'm going to take my turkey. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to rub it down. And then I'm going to cover this up. And I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. Rub the legs down. Give it a good wet down. Raise up these legs and put them up under the legs too. I'm going to put some inside of it. 
as well. Now the skin up here where the neck is, I'm going to put that in there too. Yeah, you want to you want to put it in the cavity as well in all places. back together. <clears throat> the legs back in the holder. This is what he looks like. Yeah. That's what he looks like. And I'm going to let this marinate till probably um, Tuesday. Hold on. Okay. Now we don't have the turkey injected. Now we're going to put this dressing together as best we can. Probably have to tweak it again. I got some celery, green pepper, onions. I'm going to put some Lipton soup in it. Some um, stove top stuff in there to help the flavor. And I got a bunch of other seasons I'm going to throw in there. I'll show you as I get along. Hold on, let me uh, wash my hands because I just scratched my ear. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So, first of all, we're going to crumble up this dressing. I'm not going to show me doing all of it because you've seen me do it before. So I'm just going to crumble this up. And I have two pans of this cornbread. I'm just going to do one on camera. Because I'm doing two pans of dressing. I'm doing a big one. And then I'm going to do a half sheet. <clears throat> so yeah. Just crumble it up. Let me get this crumbled up and I'll be right back. Okay. In here we have onions. Onions. Green pepper and celery. And I got about three slices of white bread I'm going to tear up in here. Now I got two pans of this. I got another one over there. 
So I'm doing it simultaneously. So I'll do some in here and then I'll go over there and do some in there. So I need to get them done both at the same time. So yeah, so I'm just tearing this bread up. This is how I do mine. You may not do this to yours, but this is how Tennessee North does hers. And I'm going to probably cut a few corners here because I'm going to add the uh, stovetop stuffing in here. Help out the flavor. You're doing a whole lot in doing multiple. You have to cut corners and do what you can. And trust me, trust me, it's gonna be good. Yeah, it's gonna be good. So. So yeah, I'm just multitasking, trying to do a lot at one time. So I'm gonna do this pan first and then I'm gonna do the other one off camera. And here's the Lipton soup. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add two packs to it, to each one. I got two boxes here. Here's the other box. Then, to this, I'm going to open one of the, um, I have a turkey one and a chicken one. It don't matter. And that's the, st the stuffing. I say everything I'm doing to this one, I'm going to do to that one over there. I don't know about y'all, but I like to clean as I go because I don't want no mess later. Now I'm going to put some garlic powder in here. Garlic powder. Gonna raise it up just a little. Yeah, garlic powder. Only thing you don't want too much of is salt in it. Everything else is adding flavor. And put some onion powder in it. I would have put a little touch of love, but I don't have any on hand at this moment. Don't have none made up. Just a little salt. Just a little. Because the soup, um, it has salt in it. It's salty. And I'm going to put some sage. Yeah. Hold up. Okay. Gonna add some sage in here. Some poultry season. Poultry has season has a little sage in it. But I like it in it too. And I'm going to put some chicken bouillon in here. Not a lot because it's salty too. Okay. A little rosemary.
and some time. <coughs> <coughs> And a little Dano. Yeah, a little bit of this. Okay. So I'm going to work this around in here a little bit. Now this pan is not big enough. I got a long, a long pan that I'm going to transfer this over to. And I'm not going to cook this. I'm just going to get it all seasoned up. Let me wash my hands. Scratch my ear again. Hold on. Okay. If you do any scratching on your body parts, yeah, you need to wash your hands. And I'm going to put some broth in here. And then I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, when I take it back out, I'm going to put some more broth in. This, I'm just getting it together so I can put it in the freezer. And the seasons will all marinate together while it's, while it's in the freezer. And then I'll pull the rest of the broth come Thursday morning. I'm going to take it out Wednesday and come Thursday morning. When I get ready to put it in the oven, I'll put the rest of the broth. Now I'm just gonna get the seasoning going and yeah, make sure it tastes good. Okay, to that. I got some chicken broth. Yep, chicken broth. This is where I'm had those um, leg quarters and and I'm gonna put some butter in here and I'm gonna go in and work it with my hands And even though I got that chicken broth, I also bought some chicken broth to add to it. This will be added in with some more broth I got in the crock pot over here. This That will be added in come uh, Thursday morning. Now we just wetten it and get this flavor all in it. Hold on. Okay. Get a spoon. I'm going to put it in my hand. I don't need nothing. Nothing at all. It's seasoned perfect. So now I'm going to put a couple of eggs in it. <clears throat> a 
Ooh, I mean, it is delicious. taste it anymore because I didn't put these raw eggs in it. And I'm going to work that in here. Now I've already fixed the giblets and everything. They're in the fridge. And come Thursday and Wednesday night, I'm going to go ahead and make my giblet gravy up. But I've already got all that together. That's already done. See, a lot of this stuff you can do ahead of time. This dressing, yeah, ahead of time. That's done. Yeah. So, because I've been killing time between here and there, so you can see the ham when it comes out. And, um, yeah. It'll be out. Let me give it another 30 minutes. And then I'm going to show you how to make the glaze. And I thought I was going to bake in this video. I'm going to wait till in the morning. Because I want my pies to, um, I got a couple of pies I'm going to make. I'm thinking I'm going to make um, um, chest. Um, pecan. Sweet potato. And a pound cake. Yeah. And depending on how I feel, I might make a cobbler. Yeah. So now I'm going to bag this up, and I'll be back with the glaze. Hold on. Okay, I got it bagged up. This is one pan, two gallon bags of dressing. Now all I have to do is put some um, broth to this. When I put it in the pan, bring it up to life, put it in the oven. Yeah. I got the other pan over there done the same way. Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to show you. Um, well, let me just pull this over to the side. I'm going to show you how to make the glaze for the ham. Hold on. Okay. It's a real simple recipe. This is the glaze for the ham. In here, I'm going to put some mustard. I'm not measuring anything. So you want about, uh, how much size? You want about two tablespoons. Yeah, about two tablespoons. Then you want to take some sugar. That size, this right here is a half a cup. Or more than a half for that size ham. For all purpose, we'll just say um, a half a cup. All purpose sugar. Now, if you want to use brown sugar, you can. But this right here will be the same. And to that, I'm going to add some. Regular pancake syrup. And you squared about about a half a cup, I would say, give or take. And you stir it up. Now, 
I'm going to take it with my finger and touch the spoon. It should be runny like, oop, like that. Hold on, let me spill some. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I had to get that right thing in. All right. That's our glaze. Mustard, sugar, and a little breakfast syrup. Okay. Here's my ham. Now, I'm going to take the cloves out. Because it don't taste good if you bite down in one. You can smell the clothes and it. it smells really good. Cloves give it a really nice taste. It adds to the ham. I think you would love the taste of it from the clothes being in it. Okay. Okay, that's all the clothes that I can find or see. Okay. Now I'm going to pour the glaze on it. Cover your whole ham with it. And all of that will drizzle down on your ham. And we we'll gonna pop this in for about another 15, 20 minutes. We'll be back. All right. This is not an eating video. It's just showing you a little bit about what I did or what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. So, here's my ham. Yeah, you see the glaze on it? Yeah. Now, this ham, for all those who don't like ham, you don't have to eat it. Mm -mm. But the ones who do like it, yeah, we're going to indulge in it. Um, the turkey, the other turkey, I just injected this one with um, smoke. I'm going to put it in the smoker. The other one, I think I'm going to put some uh, jerk season in it. Now, I don't like the hot jerk season. I like the... Hold on, I'm going to show you. Okay. It's a Caribbean style jerk. You can get this at uh, Walmart. Caribbean style jerk. Yeah. It's over there with the barbecue sauce and... Um, says marinade, uh, barbecue sauce, and, um, you know, hot sauce, dressings. That's where you get this at. It has a very good taste to it. It's not spicy. It's kind of sweet, kind of got like a, it doesn't have pineapple in it, but it gives me that. I think I said so. It had um, lime juice, um, papaya, 
Yeah, some different spices, molasses. It's kind of got a sweet taste to it. Very good. I think I might inject that one in the other one. And, um, because we're going to deep fry that one. Put the other in the smoker. Yeah. I'm going to end this video here. The old girl ain't tired tonight. No. But I spent so much time waiting on the ham to get done. I didn't want to change the temperature by putting the pies in. Now let me show you all these pie shells I got here. I got 10 pie shells here. It's a deep dish. And one, two, three sets of singles. So that's eight. Plus, I got two graham cracker crusts. I'm going to make some light and fruity pies. Or icebox type pie. Excuse me. Yeah, my grandson likes those icebox pies really well. So, and I got my butter and stuff out softened and everything. But it's getting late. And um, I don't want to have to sit up all night waiting on the pies to get out. So... The pie is going to be on the next video, which will come tomorrow. You know, I get an early start. Um, you know, all my family was over here for the football game that wasn't. So, I'm going to keep on working on it. Yeah, no distractions tomorrow. Yeah. Um... So yeah, I'm feeling good. I got plenty of rest yesterday. Oh my goodness. I think ever since I had that anesthesia from getting a colonoscopy, it's like it was still on me. But I'm good now. So, um, yeah, I'm get up and get started. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, um, you know, you have the anticipating... You know, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Um, I feel good. Um, I look forward to seeing all the family together. I think we might take pictures. If I get a chance, I might come live. That's if. I'm not going to promise that, but if. Um, my grains will be over here. Those are my hearts. Thing one. Thing one is, is three now. Thing two is two. Um, Lerone Jr. and Jerome, they sound like twins. Their dad is a twin and they're named after each one. One is a junior, one named after the twin. And the granddad. The granddaddy name is also Jerome, my ex. But, um, and now, uh, Sue Chef. I call her Mumu. Mumu will be here. Mumu is um, Courtney, and Courtney was here earlier today. So when I went out to get um, my groceries for Thanksgiving, um, I picked up her some pants. You're going to see her do uh, her thing probably Wednesday. Um, she's going to make her brownies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's been using her Easy Bake Oven, but... We're going to put these in the oven because she's doing her contribution to the dinner. Mm -hmm. She's going to walk in my footsteps. Yeah. And um, they say I got my grand spoil. Um, they come to Nana House. they everywhere. And every time I hear them say Nana, oh, that's something to tell me. My mother was Mamma. And I wonder what I was going to be called. Nana. I love it. I love every bit of it. Um, today they were in there talking. And um, somebody said, um, Ooh, I know those grands of yours get a whooping from you. My youngest daughter hollered, What? Mama don't whoop them grands. I don't want to hit them. Mm, they're babies. Yeah. And thing two, he tells me he's a baby. I baby. 
a baby nanny. How you gonna whoop him? And um, but he gets into some. Oh, he's something else. All three of them something else. But I wouldn't take nothing for it. Those are the grands that's right here, close to me. Um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I gotta find something for Junior. Thing one to eat. He doesn't need everything. Nana needs to find something that he can eat. He likes peanut butter and jelly. He likes uh, applesauce and um, he'll eat any kind of fruit. But he needs something that he can eat. Uh, he won't eat any vegetables. Mm-mm. I gotta find something he can eat. So, I'm gonna end the video here. And, um, I hope everybody get excited about Thanksgiving. Yo, Whatever Thanksgiving means to you. Get excited about it. Yeah. Enjoy. Look forward to it. If it ain't but two of you. Pick something. If it ain't number the chicken. Sit down and enjoy it. If you don't bake, buy your pie. Buy your cake. Just enjoy it. Yeah. I like a lot of noise in the house and... I would have came earlier, but you wouldn't have been able to hear me. Uh, with all the yelling. Well, I think I was doing all the yelling at the TV. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to concentrate. Um, I ain't going to even get started about it. Yeah. So. I'll see you tomorrow. Because tonight, I don't have anything to clean up because I cleaned it up while I was waiting on the ham. So I got everything set up for tomorrow. I got my mixer ready. I got my butter all softened. And tomorrow, it's going to be about the desserts. Yeah. I'm going to make, um, I've decided, I'm going to make something with these pies. I know I'm going to make uh, the light and fruity pie. I'm gonna make a couple other pies and um, a pound cake. Yeah. You know what I really would like to make? I would like to make a jam cake. Hmm. We'll see. Because I might make a jam cake. I don't know. It's gonna be either a pound cake or a jam cake. I don't know if anybody has ever had a jam cake, but yeah. My mother made one every, every Christmas. Um, it was a tradition. She made a caramel cake, a, a jam cake with uh, caramel icing. She made a coconut, and she made um, a chocolate every year for Christmas. And uh, she made all hers from scratch. I didn't take that from my mom. Everything from scratch. But she made everything from scratch. And uh, it was a tradition. Um, that you would have, um, you know, your fruit out. She wouldn't put it out till Christmas Eve because it wouldn't have made it. And she would put it on the, on the um, coffee table. And apples, oranges. And it would be like two oranges, two apples, um, grapes couple of bananas be beautiful she put her candy jars out i don't know if you remember that candy it's a hard candy a little hard candy you can kind of see through it a little bit some of them had like little ribbons yeah the hard candy um she used to sit that out and nuts a bowl of nuts yeah Bring back some memories of that. You knew 
Don't touch that fruit bowl till Christmas Day. And uh, people would come by and uh, she share the cake, you know, slice the cake, give them a slice of cake and some uh, homemade eggnog. Or she would, um, they would have, and my mother didn't drink, but she would have a little, um, I guess like a little bar. She would offer them a drink if they drank. Yeah, with that slice of cake. Never forget it. Back then, people used to go to each other's houses and you get a slice of cake and some conversation. I don't know if that was a thing back then. Had to be a thing. Because everybody did it. Yeah, and um, she'd always make that eggnog. I didn't care for eggnog. I still don't care for it. It's too thick. I don't like milk. And it looks too much like milk to me. So that's why I don't drink it. I love the smell of it. But I can't drink it. Mm -mm. It's too thick. And... Yeah. And then Christmas Day, she had that nice punch bowl out. And me and my niece was talking about um, tablecloths. She always had that nice Christmas tablecloth. I still have it. Mm -hmm. It used to be so white and it's done got yellow some over the years. But I still have it. They used to put tablecloths out, you know. Linen tablecloth. And this is a linen tablecloth. And it has uh, holly berries, I think. And like a Christmas ribbon running through it. Oh, they would set that table. Oh, man. It's like a feast. Kind of like... Um, um, Kind of like a smorgasbord, you know? Um, an all-you-can-eat bar. And I mean, you ate plenty. She made homemade rolls, too. Oh, my God. This was Christmas and Thanksgiving she would do this. And uh, putting that tree up. It was something else to put that tree up. Right after Thanksgiving, she'd be started on her Christmas stuff. Put the wreath on the door. I don't know if y'all remember this. We used to have a silver tree. And we had this strobe light that used to point toward the tree. And it would turn. It had colors on it like a wheel. And uh, whatever color it spin around, it would reflect up on your tree. Yeah. All my uncles and stuff would come by. People don't do that anymore. Hmm. Old time. Good days. I pray y'all have a good holiday. Yeah. See, Tennessee North going to have a good holiday. Even if it's just in your mind. Yeah. Remember that. Remember what you did when you were young. We were talking, my niece said, wow, I used to think, my mom didn't do 
didn't, didn't, didn't get nothing, didn't shop or nothing. That's what she would say. She said, um, I can remember having the best Christmas. She said, we, every year. It was special. My sister and myself make our kids think well. We ain't done no shopping. She said, but when she would get up, she said, oh my God, look at all those presents. I remember buying so many gifts and stuff for my kids that uh, one summer I was in the closet and a, a bag fell down. This one I didn't have a dish to two. And they're 38 and 34 now. I was digging in the closet with something and a bag fell down. Wow. It was some Christmas gifts that I had put up. Some dolls for my daughter. For my daughters. Yeah. I made them their birthday present. Yeah, when the birthday came around, I came out with them. It was some good days. Very good days. Well, I'm going to end this video. Because I done went back in time and... I'm enjoying that. Yeah, I am. But, um... Man, if you could smell this ham, oh my God. You wanna look at it again? The shadow on it. Yes. Yeah. So tomorrow, I promise, I'm doing the baking. And, um, yeah, we're going to play it by ear, but we're going to start with our pies and uh, see what else we can get into. I enjoy talking to my friends, and that's you. Y'all yeah, very kind to Tennessee North, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you um, being concerned about me, and um, but I'm okay. I'm doing good. I get tired like everybody else because I may overdo. Yeah, I stay on the go. Um, I don't have time to be still. I just um, find something I need to do and I, I get it done. Yeah. It's the holidays. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody have a happy holiday. We won't call it Thanksgiving. We'll just say happy holiday. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Pray everybody have a happy holiday. Or whatever you want to call it. Wow, oh, this ham smells so good. Too bad it's for a holiday dinner. Mm -hmm. My youngest daughter would come over here and put a knife through it. She loves ham. Ain't big as a dime, but she loves ham. Oh, she likes the fat on the ham. Yeah. It's sous chef mama. So, Sue Chef has uh, two days in school this week. 
And I guess old sous chef gonna come down here and hang out with a nana. Yeah. So sous chef will help me get into whatever we need to get into. We got a plenty. Yeah. And I'm gonna take y'all along for the ride so y'all can see what we get into. Yeah. So now we got one turkey injected, ham is done, and uh, got some dressing done. And uh, we're gonna finish up this dinner. Yeah. Got the um got the rings already done. And um I gotta make some potato salad and some devil eggs. Yeah, they my family said, Oh, you ain't make no devil eggs? Oh my goodness. They love devil eggs. Gotta have it. Yeah. So I'm gonna end this video. Like, share, subscribe. Tell someone about Tennessee North. Hit that button in the corner. Notification so you'll know when I'm here. Um, you got some memories you want to share? Hit old Tennessee North up. I don't mind reading them. I actually like reading them. Yeah. A lot of y'all sent me stuff. I've enjoyed it. And the recipes, I'm putting them in my little card box. Yeah. Um, tell me about some of your memories and, and good times. I love to read them. Come over to my house with it. And we can't physically be at each other's house, but we can be each other's house through um, conversation. Tell me something about your life. If you want me to read it, I'd be glad to read it. So I'm in the video here because it's late. And um, I'm ready to get started tomorrow. Yeah. Reminds me, I got to pull my... Um, Deep fryer out. Yeah. Um, we're making memories. Yeah. We're making memories with um, family and friends. I think once you make some memories that stay in your mind, just like the memories from old, you don't forget them. Mm -mm, you don't forget them. At least I don't. And... Hmm. I might make some punch. Just kind of nostalgic thing, you know. Bring back some old memories. All this butter I got here. Yeah. Gotta use that real butter. I'm going to get up early tomorrow. Well, I get up early anyway. And get started. Get my cakes in. Get my cake in. I got to go see if I got the stuff for a jam cake. All time favorite. 
Mm. And think about what kind of pie I'm gonna make. I know definitely it's a sweet potato and definitely a chest. But I gotta eat pie shells. Man, I gotta come up with something. Hmm. Yeah. I will. And you know I will. So, let me end this video. Wrap this ham up real good. And I get up tomorrow and take it off the bone. And put it on a platter. Or put it in a pan and cover it. And then when it's um, Thanksgiving, I'm going to... Well, uh, I'm going to put it on a nice platter. Nice Thanksgiving platter. You know... Back then, they used to set a table. Oh, made it pretty, you know, especially when people come by and you're having a big dinner. When we went in there, that table was set. Tablecloth, the ham sliced and laid on a platter, the turkey sliced, laid on that. She always went on and took it off the bone because you'd just be standing there waiting on somebody to cut. And she said, mm -mm, I'm going to fix that. And you should make a beautiful spread. Yeah. Beautiful spread. Yeah. We can't go back. But we can try to make some memories with our kids. I want them to remember. All my kids are grown now. 38, 34, 27, 25, and 22. Yeah, I know all the birthdays. Yeah. I'm close to all my children. Yeah. Yeah, I'm real close to all of them. I'm going to take the two picks out and wrap this up real good. Gonna wrap it real good. Put it in the refrigerator. Once it cools down, I'll take it off the bone. Yeah. Hmm. Just thinking about the past and what lies in front of us. I'm gonna look around one day and Sue Chef, AKA Moo Moo, will be a grown woman. Oh, wow. I see Moo Moo's mama. And in my mind, she's still that three-year-old. Yeah. I want Mumu to have memories with Granny. Not Granny, Nana. I want to have memories with me.
I can't wait for y'all to see my smoked turkey and my my other turkey. going back too far it's a funny thing too when I was a kid it always snowed at Christmas and Thanksgiving you never know when it's going to snow here it might be summer one day and winter the next and spring yeah I didn't like it I ain't like being cold. Yeah. See you tomorrow. And, um, yeah, maybe we'll get started a little early tomorrow. Yeah, it's late. Three oh one. Yeah. I tell you about some other childhood stuff. So like, share, subscribe. Tell somebody about old Tennessee North. Yeah. I know.